Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. In this episode, Nancy quotes the Puritan Jeremiah Burroughs, The devil loves to fish in troubled waters. This week, Canon Press released Jeremiah Burroughs' The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment with an introduction from Nancy. From the introduction, Nancy says, Burroughs, being a wise pastor, works the teaching of contentment into every possible nook and cranny in the Christian life. It requires diligent application. If we are to say with Paul that we have learned the secret of being content in all circumstances. Get Jeremiah Burroughs' The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment with an introduction from Nancy Wilson today at canonpress.com. Welcome to the Femina Podcast. This is podcast number four, and I'm Nancy Wilson. Today I'd like to chat with you for a bit about Psalm 90, verse 12. And here it is. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. First of all, the psalmist is asking God to teach him something. What? What is it? To number our days. And I just think, well, what is it exactly to number our days? And we do need God to teach us how to do this. We know what it is to count down till Christmas, or if you're pregnant, you're counting down to your due date, or to your wedding day, or to the end of school, so many things like that. But what is it to number our days? This is speaking more about the end. You know, how do we count our days from today until the end? How do we know how many days we have left? How do we count backwards? (laughs) You know, from like 20 days left, hopefully, we is it 20 years left? We don't know. So I can see why we need God to teach us how to do this. And it's certainly not something that comes naturally to us. We count forward, we count the years behind us, not the years ahead of us, unless we're counting down to Christmas, etc. But teach us to number our days. So not one of us knows exactly how many days we have left, and we're not supposed to know this. That information is not given to us, but we're to live in such a way, living by faith, trusting the Lord each day, that we are aware of the sand passing through that hourglass. We, we're aware that time is short. We're aware that time is fleeting. And this shouldn't terrify us, shouldn't make us fear or worry, like, oh no, my children are teenagers, it's too late, or um, I'm in my 40s, it's too late, or no, 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 no. <laughs> time is short, yes. Time is fleeting, yes. But God oversees it all, and he has assigned to you your portion of days. And so we ask him to teach us how to number them so that, so the end of this is not that we'll be scared or worried or disappointed with our performance or um, discouraged, but that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. There's something good in this that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. So. Every day requires wisdom, does it not? Every day requires wisdom. Sometimes we rush into something and we realize we haven't been wise, we haven't been careful. Uh, We have to apply wisdom to our hearts every day. I mean, if we let our hearts wander off where we don't aren't paying attention, it's it's no time at all before we're in a unwise place or we're listening to unwise thoughts or doing unwise or saying unwise things. So Before I develop this a little more, I want to just take a look at what may seem like a change of subject, but it isn't really. Hopefully, I'm going to tie this together. In Matthew 6, 31 through 34, Jesus said, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, 
for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So I want to focus particularly on that last thing. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There's a lot of practical teaching in these verses. First, Jesus says, you know, don't worry. Don't worry. And if you think about it, worry is most always focused on the future, right? Even if it's in the next five minutes, we're worried about something that's happening in five minutes. But worry is always focused not on the right now, but on the future. Jesus is saying we're not to be distracted by tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. Why? Because God knows all about it. And he is going to take care of us. He's promised to do this. And you know, ladies, good doctrine protects us from fear and worry. Good doctrine protects us. Believing his promises rather than believing a temptation keeps us from worry. Because tomorrow is theoretical for all of us, but it isn't theoretical for God. He's above time. He created time. He does not have to wait and see what tomorrow brings like we do. And he wants us to focus on today and the troubles right in front of us. And there are troubles, aren't there? There always are troubles. Today has sufficient troubles. He wants us to live in today, not in tomorrow. He wants us to steward today's troubles and not borrow trouble. We have enough things today to steward, to manage, to respond to with wisdom. And That's what I think he's getting at in some of this is one of the things he's getting at is numbering our days today. Number today. Apply your heart to wisdom today. What is God teaching you today? (laughs) What is he giving you to do today? Do I sound like a broken record? Um, What's he giving you to do? What's he giving you to apply? That's what you're to walk in right now. We tend to always be looking elsewhere, something better to do, something we want to do, or that sounds more interesting or more spiritual or whatever it is. We don't want to walk in the works he assigned for us today because we'd rather worry about tomorrow. There's just something in our flesh that wants to run ahead. And Not that it is wrong to prepare, of course. I don't think that's what is the topic here at all. If you're having a house full of company tomorrow, of course, you had better be preparing today. Yes, those are part of today's works that he's given you to do. Um, The ones assigned to you today is to get ready for those people coming tomorrow, right? But not to be worrying about tomorrow, but to be walking in the works he assigned to you today. I think this is one aspect of numbering our days. And if you think about it, consider any of the commandments that God has given us. You know, here's an example. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14. It says, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. All right, so those verses could keep it that short, two verses, has one, two, three, four, five commands in it, five imperatives, five things to do. And the only place we can apply these things, the only space we can apply them in is today. We can't apply this verse tomorrow, right now. We have to do it right in this moment, in today. I hope this makes sense. You can't apply your faith and courage tomorrow while you're living in today. In other words, like, so number your days. What is God giving you to do today? There's a whole boatload of things to apply in those two verses right now. And worrying about tomorrow distracts us and keeps us from doing the things we're called to do today. And it's, there's no wisdom there. We're not applying our hearts to wisdom if we're worrying about tomorrow. So let's just, let's look at these verses and just find a couple of things that we can apply now that we can apply our hearts in wisdom to. What's it mean to watch? Uh, It means to pay attention. Like a sailor who's standing watch is guarding the boat. He's making sure the boat is protected. It's not, the anchor isn't uh, 
whatever anchors might do, like <laughs> the boat's not drifting off somewhere. Um, so standing watch, and this verse says watch, okay? Stand fast in the faith. So what kinds of things are tempting you to not stand fast? What kinds of things are tempting you right now today to be the limp noodle and not standing fast? Uh, well, don't think hard thoughts of God. Faith means you're actively trusting him today. You're standing fast. You're not giving way. You're not giving up. Be brave. Well, today, right now, what is happening in your life that requires courage? Well, apply your heart to wisdom. Ask God to make you brave and courageous right now. Worrying about tomorrow keeps you from being courageous today. And then he says, do all things in love. Well, what things? What are the things on your calendar today? The things God has called you to do. So far, the things he's called me to do have been, you know, make the bed and fix the breakfast and do the dishes and make the coffee. And, you know, there have been, it's still early here in my world. Um, And so you do all things in love, asking God for love for all those people who come into your life and out the door, in and out all day long. Do all things in love. That is a tall order. And so we have to apply our heart to wisdom. So we're numbering our days and saying, okay, Lord, thank you. You have given me a fresh start. You've given me a new day. Help me to number it wisely to apply my heart to wisdom. And so as I start over each day, I can commit it to him and walk in it. And trust him to grant me the wisdom that I'm seeking. So the more we apply today, the wiser we grow tomorrow. Isn't that true? You learn, you apply, you grow. And when you choose to disobey, say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. Um, I want to worry about tomorrow. You know, it's a, it stunts our growth, doesn't it? it stunts us. We want to be growing in Christ. We want to be growing into wise women. Remember, because I was converted when I was 20, and then as I was a young mom and, and learning to apply so many things so fast, I was a, married at 23, a mother at 24, and in God's infinite wisdom, I married a pastor. <laughs> and I've always thought, God said, this girl needs a full-time pastor. <laughs> and what a tremendous blessing it has been and joy. But the more we lean into today's obedience, the stronger we're going to be for tomorrow and all those fresh applications. And so don't worry about tomorrow and don't look back and live in the past, but make fresh application today to what God is calling you to do. This is wisdom. But what I was going to say is back in those early days, I remember thinking, I'm going to be so glad when I have some gray hair because then maybe I will be wise. Well, I have a boatload of, I'm calling it silver hair now, and, and I trust that God is giving me wisdom, and I pray for more, and I have to apply it to myself first, and I can't teach other women things that I'm not applying myself, obviously. And so, trust God, have faith, number your days, and apply your heart to wisdom. Thanks so much for joining me today and blessings on your day.